What's going on hunters, it's Mid40s Gamer here coming at you with some more Elden Ring content. Today we're going to be taking a look at a handful of viable rune farming glitches that still work after patch 1.04.2 and this will be a down and dirty review of these locations, but if you need a complete walkthrough on how to get to the locations, we'll leave links in the description to help you out. This video comes as a request from one of our subscribers, Cherry Flavored and Acids, who asked if we could cover some rune farming tricks and glitches for console players. Say no more fam, we got you covered. So let's get ready to rake in a few million runes below the hard deck, tell Melina her ego's writing checks that her body can't cash, and get after it. Our story begins in Kaelid in Grail's Dragon Barrow at the Fort Faroth side of Grace, which as you can see from the map footage is one of the most eastern locations on the Kaelid Plateau. We'll be starting out with a rune farming glitch that's fairly well known, and it's by far one of the most lucrative ones early on if you have a weapon that's capable of inflicting bleed. This method is extremely simple and requires very little skill to pull off. All you'll need to do is position yourself at the dragon's tail and swing for the fences. The reason you need a bleed weapon for this method is so that you don't die of old age before bringing this elder dragon's hit points to zero. Once you bring the dragon's hit points down to zero, you'll need to immediately hop on torrent, ride to the side of grace, and rest before the dragon completely dissipates. If done correctly, you'll receive the 50k base runes for the kill, and the dragon will still be in its original position very much alive for you to rinse and repeat this method. If done incorrectly, the dragon will be dead for this playthrough and won't be back until the next. If you're worried you'll mess this up, we recommend backing up your game by manually saving, and if you need to know how to do that, we'll leave a link in the description just for you. The next two farming glitches will be set in the area of Mogwin's Palace, and as you can see from the map footage, we'll be starting out at the Dynasty Mausoleum entrance site of Grace. This area can be reached in a variety of different ways. The first is to complete the Whiteface Far Quest at the very beginning of the game, which we've covered in detail on a previous video. The second is to utilize a portal in the Consecrated Snowfields, and the third is to utilize a Wrong Warp glitch. The Titus Actual Gaming Channel does a great job of explaining the Wrong Warp glitch, and we'll leave a link for both of those videos in the description. As you follow the game footage, this quick run takes you up the stairs past a handful of zombie-like enemies, off a cliff, and then it's just a quick ride to the south, about 150 meters to a graveyard. From that ledge, you can double jump torrent to a smaller ledge, walk the ledge, and take another small hop up to a farther ledge. Then, all you have to do is double jump out and to the left. Once you begin falling, you'll need to swing your sword continuously for about a minute or so until you receive your first rune dump of about 124,000 runes with the Golden Scarab equipped. If you swing for another 30 seconds or so, you'll receive another small rune dump and by combining the Golden Scarab and the Pickled Falfa consumable, you can easily clear 10 million runes over the course of an hour. As far as rune farming methods go, this one is far less dangerous than telling a woman during your late night date at Denny's that she probably shouldn't horse down that whole plate of chili cheese fries. There is a faster method, and as you can see from the map footage, we'll be heading back to the same side of Grace. This method was pointed out to us by one of our subscribers, Meek, who said that this method is a little bit faster, and all it requires is to hop off the ledge next to the side of Grace, summon Torrent, and jump into a small alcove to the left of the trees, and hop up onto the ledges to the left. Once you're up top, you'll need to head southeast for just a bit until you come to a gap in the terrain modeling. You're going to drop down into that space, and then double jump at the last second. The same rules apply as the last method, you'll need to continuously swing your sword for about a minute until you receive your first rune dump, and then about 30 seconds more for any subsequent rune dumps. Then all that's left to do is rinse and repeat this easy method until you have all the runes that you can carry. Just to reiterate, you'll receive more bang for your buck if you use the Golden Scarab and the Pickled Foulfoot consumable. After taking advantage of this cheesy method, we'll move on to a tried and true method that most players are likely sick of, and as you can see from the map footage, we'll be taking a look at another area in Mogwin's Palace, the Palace Approach Ledge Road, which is everyone's favorite meta farming location for a variety of reasons. This area is arguably the best farming location in the game, and there are a few ways to earn a boatload of runes in the area. The first is the ever-famous bird farm, which is used by beginners who don't have an optimal area of effect weapon to clear the hill quickly, and while this horse has been beaten to death, it's still a viable method, albeit an annoying one. All that's required is to take aim at a bird across the way and shoot it with a ranged weapon so it aggros you and falls off the cliff. 
Then you can just rest at the side of Grace and repeat the process for over 11k runes without any boosts, and around just over 13k with the Golden Scarab. By stacking the Pickled Foulfoot, you can squeeze almost 20k out of each bird drop, but since we covered this method two months ago, we'll just press on, we just included it to showcase to newer players that it still works. Once you get your hands on some later game area of effect weapons, you can take this hill of enemies and turn it into a ghost town. You can wipe out the entire hill in seconds for about 50 to 80k runes per run, depending on the rune boost items that you're using. Then you can take a quick jog back to the side of grace so you can rinse and repeat until you reach your desired rune end state. The weapon we're currently using is the Sacred Relic Sword, which you can pick up after defeating the final storyline boss. The Wave of Gold ability attached to this weapon makes quick work of this entire hill, especially after it's taken up to plus 10. You can optimize this method even further by shooting the bird across the way first and then clearing the hill of the enemies with AoE for an even bigger boost to runes gained. While this isn't a glitch, it's worth mentioning since it's by far the best area to level up quickly and efficiently without a whole lot of jumping around with torrent. It is important to note that even if you don't have the Sacred Relic Sword, we found that General Radon's sword makes quick work of this hill as well and it's fairly easy to acquire. The lands of Elden Ring may seem to get bigger and bigger as you progress in the game, but there are also some hidden areas that require a little bit of brain power and some footwork to unlock. As you can see from the map footage, our next farming location will be located in the consecrated snowfields within the town of Ordina, which can be reached in a variety of different ways. Once you hit the ground at this location, you'll have a puzzle to solve within the town's Evergall, which will unlock Mikola's Halig Tree and the use of this farming area. As you follow the game footage, you can see that this is just another jump and fall rune farm glitch, and the same methods apply in this case. Double jump past the clipping plane and fall swinging your sword continuously until you get a golden shower of runes, which gives you a warm and fuzzy feeling that isn't messy or shameful. We'll give you some fair warning though, while this is a pretty fast method that's comparable to the one in Mogwin's Palace, it does take a few runs to get dialed in and how it works and where to jump. Once you receive the rune dumps, you can open up your map and fast travel back to rinse and repeat. The next rune glitch location we'll be taking a look at is within the mountaintops of the giants, and as you can see from the map footage, the start point for this long drop off a short cliff will begin at the White Ridge Road side of Grace. You'll reach the mountaintops of the giants through your normal story progression once you receive the rolled lift medallion from Melina, and that's after defeating Margit the Omen King within the capital of Lindell. This farming glitch, while not quite as impactful as the previous ones, is extremely easy and quick, and it follows the same pattern as the other falling glitches where you'll just double jump torrent into the ether and swing your sword until you receive some runes. What makes this farming method more magical than the Squatty Potty commercial or the creamy poop of a mystic unicorn is that if this is one of the first things that you do when you hit the mountaintops of the giants, you can not only clean up the chief guardian mini boss for the one-eyed shield drop, but you'll also drag the area's Erd Tree avatar into the ether with you so you can pocket the cerulean crystal tier and the crystal bubble tier without actually having to fight for it. Like all of the other farming glitches, once you've received all the rune dumps, you can open up your map, return to the side of grace, and continue to rinse and repeat this method. With the Erd Tree avatar disintegrated and a bunch of runes collected, we'll just swing away for another few seconds to make sure we've squeezed every last drop from this area, pop open the map, and then head back to the side of grace with a handful of loot in our bag of holding. While there are a few more areas that you can still glitch runes from after patch 1.04.2, these are the ones that we found to be the most practical. Well folks, it looks like we're coming to the end of another Elden Ring video as we sniff out what's in this jar of dirt, if it isn't actually dirt. We would like to take this time to personally thank you for watching, and if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any new mid-40s gamer content. And if you aren't too busy wondering why if you drop Silly Putty from Extreme Heights it'll shatter instead of bounce, leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know how we're doing. And for your situational awareness, we've also enabled a thanks button on all our videos in the event you really like our content and want to support us moving forward. So until next time, just remember, a mantis shrimp can punch with the force of a 22 caliber bullet, Nintendo was actually founded September 23rd, 1889, and as always, good hunting.